Everyone got lucky today. Hmm? Hey, leave them alone. Hop on. Go start a club for losers. Enrico, I know that this movie was inspired in some pipe by, by childhood summers that you spent in Italy swimming and just living it up. Where did the sea monsters come from? The sea monster came from a couple of places. One, um, the feeling of, of my best friend and I never quite fitting in. And, and, and now at that age, you often feel like an outsider or not quite right in your body very often, right? There, there's just so much change happening. So even early on, when I was thinking about, oh, there's some, maybe what if they have a secret? What if there's something that makes them really uh, have a difficulty with even embracing themselves? That felt like a good, uh, you know, having this huge changeling kind of other uh, identity felt interesting because it felt true to the age, the feeling of the of that age. Um, but then also, you know, we always look for what is what can be fun here in animation. How can we really have fun? And when I visually um, interesting. So I love those whole maps and Leviathans and Krakens and these, you know, the, the, they speak so much to the, the mystery of the sea. We just make stories up because we don't know what's there. Or we see a little something and we we, we start drawing them like huge monsters. Um, so that came together and I, I, you know, it's a fishing culture where I grew up and we started doing a little research of what, what is the dragon that it's in that little gulf that nobody, you know, why was there a story about about that or, or why would, there was a story, you know, of Colapesce, for example, in, in, in Italy, which is a boy that spent so much time in the water that became a fish. Um, and so we, we started doing the research and it felt really interesting and putting those things together with our characters that that was really where it started. Andrea, one of the big messages of this movie, as Enrico sort of mentioned, is like that everyone doesn't have to accept you as long as some people do, like a sort of like find your tribe kind of situation. Um, how long did it take you to learn that in your own life? I'm still kind of learning it. Right, it's it's a big lesson. I think for me, I was lucky enough to have, you know, I always kind of had a couple close friends along the way, but I feel like I found uh, more of my tribe in college. Um, you know, I, I was an English major, I love storytelling, and just being around so many people who adored books as much as I did felt like, oh my gosh, this is great. And in fact, I, I, we were, I traveled abroad for a semester and there was one situation as English majors, we found ourselves in playing this sort of uh, baseball type game and we were all really bad at it. And I was like, my people, uh, <laughs> not very sporty. So um, that was one of my moments. I, I knew I had found my, my people. I am obsessed with the soundtrack for this movie. Um, it's like always like if I'm at Amoeba or whatever, I'm always like, I'm going to go to like <laughs> music vintage stuff. Like that's where I'm going. So I'm really was super happy with this. Can you talk to me sort of about how it was put together and like some of your favorite cuts? Yeah, we knew from from day one that a wonderful summer movie needed it and awesome, right? Everybody's turning their radio in these movies. It's a genre that needs this wonderful little thread of, of uh, songs. And I knew, and that was actually a huge reason to place this in the 50s and 60s, you know, coming from movies like Stand By Me, they were, those were an influence early on. And so when I looked at the Italy hits of that um, era, there's so much. I honestly, it was really hard to, I wish we could have fit more in there because there, there's this wonderful kind of inspiration coming from uh, the US music. Sometimes there are covers of songs that are from the US, but then they kind of are met with, with the Italian side of pop. So I, um, it, it really just felt like, we got to put as much, put you in there. We put that first song and I, if, if there's one song, uh, that first song over our titles and something snapped into place. I'm like, okay, I'm in the right mood. I'm ready for this. And uh, it's Quartetto Cetra, Un Bacio Mezzanotte. It's a kiss at midnight. And there's this, this old uh, vibe to it that places you in, in Italy. So I'm glad you, you, you love that. There's, uh, there's good playlists coming because you can kind of really, it's been four years of listening to this and every day we would find a new one <laughs> i yeah, can't hard to choose um speaking of hard to choose last big question andrea um gelato or ice cream uh gelato i especially like that um italian 
you know, Enrico tells us this, that you pick more multiple flavors. And I like that because I think it's really hard to choose one flavor. So I like that when you get gelato, you can kind of put two or three in the cup. My, my biggest uh, uh, secret for it that I love, it's like one cream, one, one fruit, right? And, and the, the way they play with each other is always wonderful. So uh, that, that would be my uh, suggestion, <laughs> recommendation. That's an excellent suggestion. Good job. <laughs> I know your problem. You got a Bruno in your head. A Bruno? Say, silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Louder. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Can you still hear him? Nope, just you. Good. Now hang on. Ah!